Hey everybody, it's Sean and Julie. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about national park camping and not specifically about camping in the national parks, but all the campground options that are around national parks that you might not think of when you want to visit a national park and their campgrounds are full. Yeah, and not just campgrounds, but other types of campsites or dispersed camping. Yeah. So let's get into it. So the reason why we decided to do this video is because it's hard to get into a national park these days. And it's hard for a lot of reasons. One, there's more RVs than ever before out on the road. But also, um, if you have a big rig, you just might not be able to fit in a national park. Um, it could be because of the length or it could even be because of something that we recently experienced, which was the height of our RV. We only have a 30 foot fifth wheel now, but it is too tall for the 12 foot eight inch tunnel clearance at Shenandoah National Park. Yeah, so this doesn't mean that you have to get rid of your travel plans and go do something else that wasn't really on the top of your list. There's some alternative camping options for you when visiting a national park. And the first one is within the National Park, some of them have boondocking spots. Yeah, so when we were at Big Bend National Park, we were actually staying at a campground outside of the park, but we had friends who really wanted to be in the National Park. However, they had a big rig fifth wheel, and there's only a couple of sites in their big campground there at Big Bend that can accommodate it. So that means they're like always booked unless you are on there trying to make the reservation right at the uh, six month or 12 month limit that they allow you depending on the park itself. So they found out that you could get a permit to do boondocking at certain places within the national park. And that's what they did. They got the permit and they were the only ones out there. Yeah, yeah, it's really a good option in those parks as long as you have the capability to be self-sufficient. And a lot of people can make it even with the standard camper, out, you know, boondocking for a couple of days at least. So that's a, a really good option to enjoy staying inside the national park, but maybe not in one of the campgrounds. Yeah, and then the campgrounds have dump stations and water fill stations and things like that. So you still have access to services. So yeah, it's a really good option. And we would definitely recommend that you look and see if that is a possibility wherever you're planning on going. And then the second way, and this, this is also boondocking, is to boondock outside of the national parks. And a good example of this is in Joshua Tree, California, on the south end of the national park, there is, a, it's BLM land, and you can uh, boondock outside there if you can find a spot um, for two weeks, is I it? I think it's two weeks, yeah. And this is immediately right outside the gate of that entrance. So it is pretty convenient boondocking. Some places you might have to drive just a little bit further, but there's usually, especially out West, there's usually a lot of options. Yeah, and also just one exit up the road from Joshua Tree is a, um, a uh, campground that is part of Harvest Hosts mm -hmm. at the uh, General Patton Museum. And it's essentially a campground with no hookups. So yeah. there's no water, no sewer, no electric, but there are spots and there's a camp host there and you can stay there up to a week, I think it is. Yeah. And another way that you could boondock outside of national parks is through Boondockers Welcome. We will put a link down below. Boondockers Welcome is a membership that you join. The prices just went up. I can't remember the exact amount right now. It's around 50-ish dollars. Yeah, I think it's 49. Yeah, for a year and it's people who own land and they uh, allow people to come and stay on their land. It's boondocking. It typically does not have hookups, but every now and then you will find a place where they have power, maybe water and each owner can set their own terms. So some of them will say only one night, some of them will say up to six nights. 
So you really just have to do a little bit of research, but I know when we were down in South Florida, I saw a few near Everglades National Park that were boondockers welcome that were allowing people to stay up oh, to a week. And then there's uh, other national land outside of national parks, particularly mo most commonly rather is uh, national forest or BLM land, but out, out here we have national forests out yeah. east. Yeah, and when we wanted to go to the Grand Canyon, we were planning it only like a month or two out. So when I looked on the recreation.gov, which is the website for national park campgrounds, I noticed that their campgrounds inside Grand Canyon were already booked. So then I went to Campendium, which is the website I like to use or the app also to find uh, camping locations. And I just put the Grand Canyon and I found right near the southern rim of the Grand Canyon is, I think I'm pronouncing this right, Kaibab. Is that how you would say it? Kaibab, yeah. It's K-A-I-B-A-B, -B, National Forest. And they actually have um, dispersed areas, but they also have a campground, the 10X campground. Now it doesn't have hookups, but it does have water and bathhouses. So uh, that's still a pretty good option. It's not free though. It is, I think it was gonna be $10 a night. So it was really inexpensive for that little bit of resources. But again, it was really close to the south rim of the um, Grand Canyon. And so it was a good option. And then uh, besides national land, you can also find state parks near, near national parks. And those are another great option and usually have some good hiking and good trails right inside the state park that you can enjoy as well. And it really seems like almost every national park we've been to has had a state park right there. We actually just put up a video last week about Shenandoah River State Park, which is only 10 minute drive from Shenandoah National Park. Um, there's also um, near Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. There's a great um, state park. I can't remember the name of it. Jonathan Stewart, actually. Jonathan Stewart State Park. And the great thing there is we're disabled veterans. And so we were able to get 10 nights free per month in Oregon State Parks uh, but just by going online and doing that. So if you're a disabled vet, definitely make sure to check that out. But also when we were at the Redwoods, that was actually a unique national park because it, the name of it was like national and state parks, yeah. plural. And so they're kind of like grouped together, but they're all up around the coast there, the northern coast of California. And there's the national park and a few different state parks. Yeah, and we stayed actually at a KOA there, um, but the state park and the national parks and the, and the whole area is just gorgeous. So mm -hmm. you can find some options there. And we'll talk about um, the next option, which is you can find nearby campgrounds like mm -hmm. we did. And up there in Northern California, we stayed at the Redwoods KOA. Mm -hmm. In Crescent City, California. And uh, it it was cool because the, the Redwood trees were still in the campground. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could, I mean, it was like being in a state park, essentially, that campground was a uh, very, very unique KOA. I yeah, think. but with KOA amenities. So it had the dog park and the laundry and, you know, the Wi-Fi and these types of things. When we were at Big Bend, we stayed at a privately owned resort. It was actually in between Big Bend National Park and Big Bend Ranch State Park. But we chose a privately owned one. Um, it was in the little towns called Lajitas. It was Maverick Ranch. We'll put a link to our video. But the reason why we chose that is at the time we had the big rig, the 44 foot toy hauler. So camping in the national park was a problematic. <laughs> and then um, we also needed internet. And when you go to Big Ben, you got to be off grid or you got to stay at this place, Maverick Ranch, because they had a hotel there. And in the hotel, they had a business center. And that's where you could go get your internet because the internet and the campground didn't work. I mean, you had to go, but you could use all the amenities of the resort. So that's kind of a nice way to visit a national park, but also be pampered a little bit. I have heard that they've upgraded the Wi-Fi, so it is good in the campground now at Maverick Ranch. 
Nice. And uh, one thing about the Redwoods KOA that I'll say is um, it's it would be difficult getting in and out of there with a big rig too because oh, yeah. the the roads are pretty narrow and they try to keep it as natural as possible. I think mm -hmm. so. It does make for some tough driving. Uh, we had no problems with our 30 foot fifth wheel, but if we would have had that 44 footer, it would have been a, a challenge to say the least. Um, so make sure you're looking at some sort of view of the campground before you book it, just to make sure that you'll be okay um, with the size of your rig. Yeah, and that actually stands for any national park campgrounds because national park campgrounds especially are not known for being very large uh, because they're trying to conserve the beauty of the area. And sometimes there's tunnels, there's low hanging trees. I know when we were going to Zion, there was an issue with the height also. So definitely look at the length of the site, the height of the site, and then look at sites like Campendium to see um, if people put comments about the road conditions, because that's when you can find out that it's a really narrow road, it's a curvy road, or if you're boondocking, that you're gonna to have to go 10 miles down washboard dirt road. And then uh, as a bonus, we just wanna talk a little bit about Lake Mead National Recreation Area, which you see behind us here. And uh, it has camping available as well. Yeah, and the neat thing about the National Recreation Areas is they're like considered a National Park Service unit. They're run by the National Park Service. So that's why I like to mention them. It's not only about the parks themselves. And Lake Mead is gorgeous. It's right outside of Las Vegas, but you're far enough away that you feel like you're in a natural environment. And so there's all the same options we talked about. Within uh, the National Park area, there is a full service, full hookup campground that's waterfront that is Lake Mead RV Village and it's run by a contracted concessionaire. Then there are your more traditional national park campgrounds that are partial hookups and have dump stations and smaller sites because Lake Mead RV Village is big rig friendly. Um, but the traditional campgrounds that go around the lake, they're smaller, um, and, but the price is smaller. And if you're a senior or you have an access pass, it's 50% off those other more traditional sites. Usually the concessionaires don't provide that discount. Yeah. And then there was boondocking. Yeah. So that's what you're seeing right here. There are actually RVs boondocking at Lake Mead National Recreation Area. But there's an important thing to note about this. Since it's run by the National Park Service, there's still a fee to get in if you don't have a National Parks Pass. And I was reading on Campendium and that's what's so great about Campendium. Someone was saying, well, yeah, boondocking's free, but it's $30 a day to get in and out of the recreation area. So if you're gonna be boondocking, be aware of that. And that would apply really for any national park. Make sure you have a National Parks Pass because if you don't, then you're gonna to have to pay that fee. And then, like I said, there's always state parks nearby, which near Lake Mead in Las Vegas is Valley of the Fire State Park, which Beautiful. is fabulous. And it has campgrounds. And there was even a Heartland Cyclone, which is what we used to have in there. So you could squeeze in some big rigs. And then of course, in Vegas, there were several nice campgrounds, yeah. even one of those fancy uh, motor coach resorts. And if you have a military affiliation that allows you to go on to military bases and camp, they have uh, Nellis Air Force Base, which is a really nice campground too, and they've just expanded it. So that puts you uh, close to home as far as military goes. So don't let anybody tell you that uh, the national park's full and so you can't go there. There's plenty of options for camping around national parks or in national parks, just not in the campgrounds. And so don't let the national park campgrounds uh, discourage you from going if they're full. There's lots of options to explore. You just have to uh, get creative and look around at what those other options are. 
Yep. And definitely leave a comment below and let us know if you have used one of these alternative forms of camping when you visited a national park. Share your suggestions so that other people can learn from them. And hopefully we'll see you out at a national park one day. But until we do, safe, safe travels. travels.